I just made the world's largest dance party in Blender, and today I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. If you are trying to upgrade your crowd simulation game, I have three words for you. Randomized animation offsets. In essence, every scatter system is the same. We take a piece of geometry, randomly distribute points on it, and then instance a piece of geometry on those points. And there are tons of tools for creating complex scatter systems. One of my favorite being Scatter 5, which I just made a video about. Check it out up there. Here's the thing about crowd simulations. We don't just need to scatter our object everywhere, we need to offset their animations, which was not possible until just now. So like the video, get subscribed, because today I'm going to help you level up your crowd simulation game. Let's jump right into it. So the number one thing you need in any crowd simulation, of course, is people. And you probably want those people to move. So I headed over to Mixmo and I found this female character and dancing animation. Now there's no particular reason why I chose this character specifically, but I chose the animation because it loops. When creating crowds with animation offsets, there are really two ways to go about setting it up. You could either have one giant animation where it blends multiple animations together seamlessly, or you could have just one simple animation that loops forever. Now, blending animations is a huge topic, so we'll go over that in a future video. Today, just go ahead and download yourself a looping animation that fits your tastes, and we will be good to go. Alright, now that you've chosen a character in Mixamo, it's time to finally open up Blender and get this thing started. I'm going to go ahead and go into File, Import, FBX, I'm going to bring in that dancing character. For me, I've stored it in this FBX folder, and it's called the Snake Hip Hop Dance. So I'm going to go ahead and import that in. And I just happen to know exactly how many frames it is, because I'm a giant nerd. And I know it's 459. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in here. But of course, you can just find the very last frame and make sure you set your final frame as the end of this sequence. Now, something we're going to notice is that this is broken up into a bunch of different parts. And the way the crowd simulation works, we need these all to be joined together. So let's go ahead and do that. But first, I want to make sure that my shirt gets its own material because I want to randomize it throughout our scene. So I'm going to go over to the Material tab with the shirt selected. I'm going to hit this 5 here to make a new material. And I'm just going to call it Shirt. So once that's done, I can now go ahead and pop open my armature, select all the objects in it, and I'm just going to do Control j to join them all together. And we can see that we have the three materials now. We have the body, we have the shirt, and we have the hair. Now the next step is actually super easy. We're just going to go ahead and export this out as an Alembic sequence. So go ahead and select your character and head over to File, Export, and Alembic. Navigate to a folder where you want to save it out. You can see that I've already done so. Give it a cool name. I've called it Dancing Girl. And make sure your frame end is the same of your animation. That's why we set it over here earlier. The only other thing to check is only selected objects and make sure that face sets is selected. If it's not selected, your Olympic sequence will come in with no materials and that's just a giant pain. So go ahead and make sure face sets is selected. Once that's done, go ahead and hit export and it will run through your entire sequence and you should be left with a nice neat Olympic file. So we can actually go ahead and delete our armature here and our character and we'll go ahead and do file import Olympic. We'll find our dancing girl and we'll hit import and we'll see even though it doesn't have an armature, it's still able to go through the motions, which is exactly what we wanted. Though it does come in parented to a null. So we're going to select our character, we're going to hit alt P and we're going to clear parent and keep transformation and then just delete that null. That way we just have our character object here. All right, so I think this is a really good time to actually go ahead and set up and fix our materials. So something worth noting when it comes to the materials from a Mixamo character is they all come in with the metallic set to 0.5. So we're going to go ahead and go through and set all of these to zero. Once that's done, you're going to notice that I also went ahead and set the body's subsurface to a weight of 0.1. 
This just gives us a little bit of subsurface on those ears here and pieces of skin. And while it's not perfect, because if you look really closely, you'll notice things like the shoes have a bit of subsurface, I still think it's just that little bit that goes a long way. And do you remember how we created our own shirt material earlier? Well, let's go ahead and take advantage of that. Drag all these materials out so you have a little bit more room here, and we're going to add an object info node. So I'm going to go ahead and type in object info, and there it is. And from the random slot, I'm going to go ahead and add a hue saturation value node. This will allow us to have a random color for every single shirt for every single character. So go ahead and drag the body diffuse color into the color slot and plug that into the base color. And if I go ahead and I duplicate my character, we'll see that every character has a different shirt color. And that's exactly what I wanted. So with those few fixes out of the way, we should finally be ready to set up our simulation. So let's go ahead and jump into the geo nodes. Already we are finally in the very last stretch of this tutorial. We are going into the geometry nodes. Now this of course is going to be the largest section of the tutorial. However, it's how this whole thing works. We're actually going to set up our crowd. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a plane here, and this is going to be the object that our crowd spawns on. If we scale it by 5 by doing S and then 5 and then GX just to move it over a little bit. Let's go ahead and apply that scale as well. Control A and then click scale, and we can actually start working on our geometry nodes. In the bottom here, I've switched this over to the Geometry Node Editor, and I'll click New to create a new Geometry Nodes setup. Now, the very first thing we're going to want to do on this Geo Nodes setup is distribute some points on faces. Just like we talked about before, this is the basis for any scatter system. Now, something I'm also going to do is I'm going to pop out of rendered view. Sometimes when you're adding nodes or deleting nodes in geo nodes, it can cause Blender to crash when you're in rendered view. So I just want to avoid that and just be in the viewport shading for now. Now, of course, the next thing we're going to need to do is bring in our character into our geo node setup. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on them in the outliner here and drag them into it. And we'll have an object info node. Finally, let's go ahead and add a instance on points node. And we'll plop that right in between the distribute points on faces and our output. Now, obviously, we won't see anything because we're not instancing anything. So let's go ahead and plug in our geometry into our instance. And if we do that, we'll see everything's looking kind of crazy. And that's because we also want to move over our rotation and our scale. And if we do that, we can see that we probably have a couple more people than we need. And that's because the density is way too high. Instead of just using a random distribution, though, I want to use this Poison disk or however you pronounce that so I'm going to switch it over to this and we'll really see no change But if we increase the density min to something like I don't know two meters now each of our people should be about two meters apart But obviously this isn't exactly what we want to do if we went ahead and played this right now Every person would be doing the exact same motion at the exact same time, which isn't really what we want So there are two steps to getting us that randomness that we oh so desire the first step is baking out our original animation in geometry nodes, and the second step is randomizing the offset for that animation for every point. So let's go ahead and start with the bake. From this geometry here, I'm going to go ahead and drag it out and set it to geometry to instance. Once that's done, I'm going to add a simulation zone. And we're going to go ahead and join this geometry into the simulation zone. So I'm going to go ahead and add a join geometry node here, and I'll plug this in just like this. And that's the entire simulation zone. Nothing fancier required. Now this is where we really take advantage of the power of Blender 4.1. Drop down a bake node, and this will allow us to bake out this animation. So switch it over to animation, plug in your geometry, and before you hit bake, go over to the node tab here. And we're going to see that there's a properties panel. Go ahead and check mark custom range and make sure this range is set to the length of our animation. Remember how I said I was a nerd and knew the exact frame range of this animation before? Well, this is why. It is 459, so I'm going to go ahead and set that there and I'm going to hit bake. Something worth noting while this is baking is that if this bake option here is grayed out for you, it's probably because you haven't saved your file. It will not let you save a bake until you've saved the file. So make sure you save this somewhere safe and you can bake this right out. Once that's done, we can go ahead and actually unhook this from the simulation zone. And in fact, we could just delete the entire thing. 
We don't need it anymore. All we need is this bake node. Let's go ahead and unhook our instance here and we're gonna plug this bake into that instance. And if we do that, we'll see something crazy. Whoa, that's not exactly what we wanted. That's because the Geonode setup here is trying to instance every single frame of this animation up to frame 156 all at the same time. If we go back here and let it play, you can kind of see what I mean. And obviously this isn't what we want, so we're gonna scroll down to the instance on points node here and click on pick instance. Now if we play it back, well, they're not duplicating anymore, but they don't really understand that they need to play their animation in order. And that's where the second part of this came up, where we set up the animation offset. So go ahead and drop down a value node, and we're gonna set this to hashtag frame. What this means is whatever frame we are on, it will be the value of this number here. So let's go ahead and drag it out and add it in a math node. And we're gonna switch it over to subtract. Now the value on the bottom here, it's how different this animation will be from this one in terms of time. So if I want them to have a 10 frame difference, we'll go ahead and set it to a value of 10. Obviously, I think 10 is a little small, so we'll set it to something a bit bigger, like 150. Now there's only two more nodes we need in order to finish up our crowd simulation. That is an index node, if we drop it down here, and finally a random value node. So let's go ahead and drop that in, and we're going to plug the subtract into the min here, our original frame value into the max, and our ID will be our index. Now if we plug this into our instance index node and hit play, we'll notice that things still look a little bit weird. Obviously, this isn't doing exactly what we want, but all of a sudden, once we get past our original playback range, everything's gonna come to life and all of our characters will be having their own random animations. So if we look at these two characters here, we can see that they're basically doing the exact same animation. And I personally think that we could use a bit more variation here. But adding that variation is crazy simple. All you need to do is increase this value. So if we set this to something bigger, like a thousand, and go back into our sequence, we can see that our variation has become even greater. Now no two characters really have the exact same animation. And we could scale that up, and every character could have animation that's up to a thousand frames different from the character next to it. And of course if we look at this through our shader view, we can see that each character is getting their own different colored shirt because of the shader node we set up earlier. This is insane, and also it renders super quickly. Now I will warn you, if I tab into edit mode here and I increase the size of my plane, let's say by five, the viewport is going to get very laggy. But that doesn't mean that the render will be laggy. I was actually able to render the scene you saw at the beginning of this video in 40 seconds per frame, and that's at 4K. So you can definitely feel free to run wild with it. But that is basically it. That is where I'm going to go ahead and leave this tutorial. Of course, if you wanted more complexity, you could duplicate this setup, add different types of people, add different animations. You can really go wild with it. So I hope that this inspired you to make something awesome in Blender, and if it did, Again, I would just really appreciate a like on the video, and if you want to see more stuff like this, go ahead and subscribe. I've been Alex with Level Up Plus VFX, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.